When it comes to smaller companies designing their own cars, there's always been a very simple and easy way to make sure they'll have the power and sound it deserves. Drop an LS in it. It's a simple spell, but quite unbreakable. Well, a while ago, I talked about the five craziest Corvette transformations. But I'm not done yet. Today, I've got five more wild transformations, and some of these could give a couple of the other ones a run for their money. Let's get into it. I know most of the time when you look at a kit car or anything with a donor, most people are like, oh, ew, dude, what the fuck? As a disclaimer, I want to say I wouldn't get any of these full designs for my own car, but they'd still be really wild to see on the road or at a meet, and I definitely respect them. Without further ado, the first one is the Slash, or the Vetter Corvette. Made from a C6, it used the same LS3 engine, making 450 horsepower through an automatic transmission. Beyond the insane bodywork, it had upgraded brakes, coilover suspension, front and rear cameras with dual monitors, and custom side exhaust. It also had 20-inch wheels and reverse scissor doors, which I really like. Looking at the back, I know a lot of people probably look at this like, Damn, boy, he's thick, boy! That's a thick ass ball. But if I'm honest, I don't really like the rear design. The guy who made it said he wanted the back to look more like an exotic, and I really think it does, but I don't think those curves and angles work that well. Moving to the front though, I love the design over the engine, and it took me a little bit to notice this, but the way that the hood bridges back to the side of the car. Some of you guys already know, I don't like the new Ford GT. It should have had a V8, maybe people should start LS swapping those. <laughs> But anywho, I do have to admit though, it's still a great looking machine. And one of the things I thought was really cool is the way they bridged the back together. Now that little detail on the slash really reminds me of that. The interior is basically the same, but there's new materials and small door adjustments. Sadly, this was just a one-off made by Mike Vetter, but it was for sale on eBay at one point for about 90 grand and even had a 12 year warranty. Next up is the Rapier SLC. I admit, this one's not fully built from a Corvette. Liar! They say other engines will work in it, but they specifically talk about LS engines, mostly the LS7, as the engines to use. If I was building one of these, I'd probably listen to them because you definitely wouldn't be disappointed by having that awesome Bald Eagle LS7 music. The look of it kind of reminds me of the Ultima GTRs with the very short front and somewhat bubbly windshield, and the back's pretty similar too. They even offer hippo ear styled mirrors like the Ultimas have. The whole kit costs a little under 50k and they say completed builds usually cost around 65, but you could get up to 100,000 depending on what you put in it. Also, as far as kit car companies go that I've seen, these guys actually have a pretty fun website that I had fun playing around with. Most smaller companies don't have this, but they had it like the big brand websites where you can see the spec you're building right on the screen. Number three is the Competition Carbon C7RR Widebody. Now I know this doesn't really disguise anything, you can still see it's a Corvette, but with that front end, it looks like it wants to eat you, use you as fuel, then do a burnout on the ashes that come out of the exhaust. I guarantee with this look, when you pull up at car meets, you'd be looking at everyone like, <laughs> Why are you running? Why are you Oh, and I forgot to mention the freaking engines coming out of the hood. This is a next level shaker look, and I know it's not really clean. Keep in mind, I wouldn't get any of these full kits for my car, but you've got to admit that that's some badass Mad Max type shit. It's a fiberglass body kit that costs 12 grand on their website, but they do also offer a carbon fiber front splitter or side skirts each for $1,000 and a rear lower bumper and splitter combo for $1,500. On their website, they say this kit makes it three inches wider than the C7R GTLM race car and seven inches wider than a C7Z06. Um, Daryl, you thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> the fourth Corvette transformation is the Eden Green Zeklat. I'm not completely sure how to pronounce that. I might have botched it a little bit, but we'll just go with that. And yes, there is actually a C7 Grand Sport under this European classy design. They paired this curvy carbon fiber shell with a C7's 460 horsepower LT1. The interior is still very similar to C7's, but even just with the center of the steering wheel, it makes it look very Alfa Romeo-y. The exterior is obviously not my style, but for what they were aiming for, I think they killed it. 
A lot of people say it looks like Cruella DeVille's car, and yeah, with the long curved back, it does, I can't deny it, but I feel like that's just an injustice to it. If I paid for one of these and the first thing I heard when I rolled up to a car meet was, look, it's Cruella DeVille, I'd be like, what the hell did you just say? Now, speaking of paying for one, I tried to find out how many were made or sold, and I couldn't find anything besides the hypothetical prices that were announced. They said the prices would follow the idea of their total costs divided by their number of customers. The estimate for if they made 25 units would be around 600000 for each, and if they only made five of them, each one would cost $1.2 or $1.4 million. Whoa, what? The final wild Corvette transformation for today is the Ares S1 project. The Italian-based production is said to begin in 2021, but really, who knows, if you're watching this and it's 2022 or sometime in the future and it never happened, just throw an F for Ares in the comments. Underneath the hypercar-looking carbon fiber body are the mechanics of the C8 Corvette. It even has the same engine, but thanks to a US-based supplier, it's been dialed up to 715 horsepower and pound-feet of torque and a 9,000 RPM redline. They also have a spider version, which mechanically is the same as the coupe, or really I should say coupe, because we're talking about fine Italian design here. Coupe. Coupe. My one complaint, and this might just be me, maybe nobody saw this before and now I'm just ruining it for you guys, the front kind of reminds me of this guy. I know it's probably just me and it's a little weird, but with the wide oval front grille and those headlights, I sort of see his eyes and mouth. It's not an overwhelming similarity to me, I still think the car looks great, but it's just a little tint over it that I can't really get rid of. Anyway, when it comes to the interior, you'd really only recognize the shape of the steering wheel from the original car, but the curves, center console, and materials all look really well put together. Obviously, with the looks and power like this, the price is going to be pretty hefty and it's supposed to start around 600000 It is going to be pretty rare though, as they said only 24 coupes and 24 convertibles will be made, and I honestly really hope it happens. An honorable mention for the list is the Supervets C6 to C7 ZR1 conversion, which isn't really enough to call a transformation because it's just a front bumper, but god I think that looks freaking cool. When I first saw it on Instagram, I didn't really know what to think. I just kind of scrolled past. Now that I look at it again, Lord have mercy, I'm about to bust. Especially with the C7 styled headlights, I think it gives an awesome mix of curves and angles. Let me know in the comments if any of you guys agree with me on that. Looking at all these, if I could easily afford even the 1.4 millions of clout, I don't think I'd buy any of them. Besides maybe that C6 conversion bumper. Hold on. This whole operation was your idea. I think I'd only want any of these if I already had like all the cars in my dream garage and a few different normal looking Corvettes, but they do provide a really cool way for people to drive something unique and something that sounds great. For anyone who's new to the channel, I upload American car news and content like this every week. If there's something you want to see or any questions you have, leave a comment below or shoot me a DM on Instagram and I'll make sure to get back to you. As always, thank you all very much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I'll see you guys next week. Have a great day.